a flight attendant named Bethany slaps an elderly black man, unaware that he is a billionaire. But two minutes later, she faces the biggest reckoning of her career as ruthless revenge strikes. How will this encounter transform Bethany's life? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. Sebastian Dixon stepped onto the first-class cabin of the airplane, his weathered hands gripping a well-worn leather briefcase. At 60 years old, his gray-white hair and kind eyes spoke of a lifetime of experiences. Despite being a billionaire, Sebastian's appearance was far from flashy. He wore a simple light gray suit, looking more like a friendly neighbor than a powerful businessman. As he made his way down the aisle, Sebastian nodded politely to the other passengers. His gentle smile put people at ease, even though many of them had no idea they were in the presence of one of the richest men in the country. Sebastian preferred it that way. He had never been one for showing off or making a fuss. Finding his seat, Sebastian carefully stowed his briefcase in the overhead compartment. He sank into the plush leather seat with a quiet sigh of relief. It had been a long day of meetings, filled with important decisions and weighty discussions. Now all he wanted was a peaceful flight home. A flight attendant approached with a warm smile. Can I get you anything to drink, sir? Just water, please, Sebastian replied softly. Thank you. As the attendant moved away, Sebastian gazed out the window at the bustling airport beyond. He thought about how far he had come from his humble beginnings. Growing up, he never could have imagined flying first class, let alone owning his own company. Life had been hard, full of struggles and setbacks, but those challenges had shaped him into the man he was today. Sebastian closed his eyes for a moment, feeling grateful for all he had achieved. But more than the money or the success, he was proud of the good he had been able to do in the world. His philanthropy work brought him more joy than any luxury ever could. The plane began to fill up around him, the quiet hum of conversation growing louder. Sebastian pulled out a book from his carry-on bag, looking forward to losing himself in its pages during the flight. As he opened it, he couldn't help but feel a sense of contentment wash over him. Here, high above the clouds, he could leave behind the pressures of his busy life for a few hours. Little did Sebastian know that this flight would be anything but quiet. As the last passengers boarded, he had no idea that his life was about to take an unexpected turn. The calm before the storm was about to end, bringing with it a challenge that would test his character and change his perspective forever. As Sebastian settled into his comfortable first-class seat, he breathed a sigh of relief. The day's stress began to melt away as he looked forward to a peaceful flight, but his moment of calm was short-lived. Bethany, a flight attendant in her late thirties with perfectly styled hair and a crisp uniform, approached Sebastian's seat. Her eyes narrowed as she looked him up and down, her lips pressed into a thin line. Excuse me, sir, Bethany said, her voice sharp and cold. I think you may have wandered into the wrong cabin. The economy section is further back. Sebastian looked up at her, surprised by her tone. He smiled politely and said, No, ma'am, I'm in the right place. My seat is here, Sebastian says, as he walks from the lavatory to his seat before the takeoff. Bethany's eyebrows shot up, disbelief clear on her face. She glanced around at the other passengers, who were now watching the exchange with interest. I'm going to need to see your ticket, Bethany demanded, holding out her hand. Her voice dripped with skepticism. Sebastian felt a familiar ache in his chest. He'd faced this kind of treatment before, but it never got easier. Still, he kept his composure, refusing to let Bethany's rudeness affect him. With steady hands, Sebastian reached into his pocket and pulled out his ticket. He handed it to Bethany without a word, his face calm and dignified. Bethany snatched the ticket from his hand. She held it up to the light, turning it this way and that, as if searching for some sign that it was fake. The other passengers watched in uncomfortable silence. Is there a problem? Sebastian asked quietly, his voice steady despite the humiliation of being questioned so publicly. Bethany's eyes flicked from the ticket to Sebastian's face and back again. She seemed unable to believe that this man, dressed so simply and looking so out of place in her eyes, could actually belong in first class. 
This ticket seems unusual, Bethany said, her voice dripping with suspicion. I'll need to verify it with the gate agent. Sebastian took a deep breath, fighting to maintain his composure. He could feel the eyes of the other passengers on him, some curious, others sympathetic. But he refused to let Bethany's behavior rattle him. Take all the time you need, Sebastian said calmly. I assure you, everything is in order. As Bethany stomped off to check his ticket, Sebastian closed his eyes for a moment. He thought about how far he'd come, about the struggles he'd faced and overcome. This was just another hurdle, another moment to show grace in the face of prejudice. He opened his eyes and looked around at the other passengers, offering them a small, reassuring smile. Sebastian knew that his dignity and calm in this moment spoke volumes, far more than any angry outburst ever could. As Bethany returned with Sebastian's ticket, her face was flushed with anger and embarrassment. She thrust the ticket back at him, her hand shaking slightly. Well, it seems the ticket is valid, she said through gritted teeth. But there must be some mistake. Surely you meant to book a seat in coach. Sebastian took a deep breath, his patience wearing thin. He looked Bethany in the eye and spoke firmly but calmly. There's no mistake, ma'am. This is my seat, and I have every right to be here. Bethany's face turned an even deeper shade of red. She glanced around at the other passengers, who were now openly staring at the unfolding drama. Sir, I must insist that you lower your voice, Bethany hissed. You're being disrespectful to me and the other passengers in first class. Sebastian blinked in disbelief. He hadn't raised his voice at all. He opened his mouth to respond, but before he could say a word, Bethany's hand flew through the air and slapped him. The sound echoed through the cabin. Sebastian's head jerked to the side from the force of Bethany's palm striking his cheek. A collective gasp rose from the other passengers. For a moment, time seemed to stand still. Sebastian slowly turned his head back to face Bethany, his hand rising to touch his stinging cheek. His eyes were wide with shock and hurt. Bethany stood frozen, her hand still raised, as if she couldn't believe what she had just done. The color drained from her face as the reality of her actions sank in. The cabin fell into a stunned silence. Passengers looked on with open mouths and wide eyes, unable to process the scene they had just witnessed. Some reached for their phones, while others whispered urgently to their seatmates. Sebastian sat very still, his dignified composure shaken for the first time since he'd boarded the plane. He looked at Bethany, seeing the panic growing in her eyes as she realized the gravity of her mistake. Sebastian took a deep breath, his cheek still stinging from the slap. He looked at Bethany, his eyes filled with a mix of hurt and determination. Why did you slap me? He asked calmly, his voice barely above a whisper. Bethany's face flushed again, but she stood her ground. You were being disrespectful, she insisted, her voice shaking slightly. This is first class, and there are standards to maintain. Sebastian shook his head slowly, disbelief etched on his face. He opened his mouth to respond, but was interrupted by a soft ping from his phone. Glancing down, he saw a message that made his eyebrows rise slightly. While Bethany continued to fume, Sebastian discreetly read the message. It confirmed that his company had just finalized the purchase of the airline's parent company, a deal he'd been working on for months. A small smile played at the corners of his mouth as he put his phone away. As the plane began to taxi for takeoff, Sebastian pulled out his phone once more. He quickly typed out a message to the airline's CEO, requesting an immediate internal investigation into Bethany's conduct. His fingers moved swiftly over the screen, outlining the incident in clear, concise terms. With the message sent, Sebastian leaned back in his seat. He decided to keep his new ownership of the airline to himself for now. There was no need to make a scene or draw more attention to the situation. Instead, he would set his plan in motion quietly, observing and gathering information. Throughout the flight, Sebastian kept a watchful eye on Bethany. He noticed how she avoided his section of the cabin, delegating tasks to other flight attendants whenever possible. When she did have to pass by his seat, her movements were stiff and her eyes darted nervously in his direction. Sebastian watched as Bethany interacted with other passengers, 
noting the differences in her behavior. She was polite but distant with most, overly attentive to a few, and noticeably less friendly to passengers of color. Each observation was carefully filed away in Sebastian's mind, forming a clearer picture of the woman who had so rashly judged him. As the flight progressed, Sebastian's mind worked on the changes he would implement. This incident, as unpleasant as it was, had given him a unique opportunity to witness firsthand the issues within the airline. He was determined to use this experience to create positive change, not just for himself, but for all passengers who might face similar discrimination. As the flight progressed, Sebastian kept a watchful eye on Bethany's interactions with other passengers. His heart sank as he witnessed another troubling incident unfold before him. An elderly black woman, her silver hair neatly tied back in a bun, struggled to lift her carry-on bag into the overhead compartment. She looked around, her eyes searching for assistance. Excuse me, she called out softly, her voice trembling slightly. Could I get some help, please? Bethany was nearby, arranging items on her service cart. She glanced up, her eyes briefly meeting the older woman's pleading gaze. Sebastian watched, his brow furrowing as Bethany quickly looked away, pretending not to have heard the request. Just then, a white passenger a few rows ahead raised his hand. Miss, could I have another pillow? He asked. Bethany's demeanor changed instantly. A bright smile spread across her face as she hurried over to the man. Of course, sir. I'll get that for you right away, she chirped, her voice dripping with enthusiasm. Sebastian's jaw clenched as he watched the scene unfold. The contrast in Bethany's behavior was stark and undeniable. He felt a deep sadness settle in his chest, not just for the elderly woman who was still struggling with her bag, but for the larger issue at hand. Unable to sit by and watch any longer, Sebastian stood up and made his way to the elderly woman. May I help you with that, ma'am? He asked gently. Gratitude shone in the woman's eyes as she nodded. Oh, thank you, young man. These old bones aren't what they used to be. As Sebastian carefully lifted the bag into the compartment, he couldn't help but notice Bethany watching from the corner of her eye. Her face was a mix of emotions, embarrassment, defiance, and perhaps a hint of shame. Returning to his seat, Sebastian's mind raced. This incident had solidified his determination. It wasn't just about addressing Bethany's actions anymore. There were clearly deeper, systemic issues within the airline that needed to be tackled. He pulled out his tablet and began jotting down ideas, training programs on diversity and inclusion, revamping hiring practices, establishing clear protocols for assisting all passengers regardless of their appearance. The list grew longer as Sebastian's vision for transforming the airline's culture from within took shape. As the flight continued, Sebastian's mind remained focused on the troubling incidents he had witnessed. With a heavy heart, he pulled out his smartphone, determined to dig deeper into the airline's history. His fingers moved swiftly across the screen as he searched for any information about past complaints or issues. What he found made his stomach churn. Page after page of complaints about discriminatory practices from flight staff popped up. Sebastian's eyes widened as he scrolled through the seemingly endless list. Many of these complaints had been either dismissed or given only a cursory response. This can't be right, Sebastian muttered under his breath, shaking his head in disbelief. As he delved further, a familiar name caught his eye. Bethany. There were multiple complaints specifically mentioning her by name. Sebastian's jaw clenched as he read through the details. Passengers of color being ignored or treated rudely. Elderly travelers left without assistance and even instances of outright hostility towards those who didn't fit Bethany's narrow view of a first-class passenger. One particularly heartbreaking complaint stood out. A young mother traveling with her mixed-race child had been subjected to Bethany's cruel comments and dismissive behavior. The woman's words leapt off the screen. I felt humiliated and angry. My child asked me why the lady didn't like us. How do you explain that to a five-year-old? Sebastian's eyes stung with unshed tears. He thought of his own experiences growing up, the countless times he had faced similar treatment. He had hoped things would be different now, but clearly, there was still so much work to be done. As he continued to read, Sebastian realized that the problem went far beyond just one flight attendant. 
The sheer number of complaints and the inadequate responses from the airline pointed to a much larger systemic issue. This was a cultural problem that had been allowed to fester and grow over time. Sebastian's resolve strengthened with each passing minute. He knew now that simply addressing Bethany's behavior wouldn't be enough. The entire airline needed a complete overhaul of its policies, training, and corporate culture. He began making notes on his phone, his mind racing with ideas for sweeping changes. Mandatory sensitivity training for all staff, a complete revision of the complaint handling process, and the implementation of a zero-tolerance policy for discriminatory behavior were just the beginning. As Sebastian looked up from his phone, his gaze fell on Bethany, who was serving drinks to passengers a few rows ahead. He saw her now not just as an individual who had wronged him, but as a symptom of a much larger problem. His heart felt heavy, but his determination burned brighter than ever. Sebastian leaned back in his first-class seat, his mind whirring with ideas. He knew that addressing the airline's problems would require more than just a quick fix. With a deep breath, he began to sketch out a multi-layered approach for reform. First on his list was a company-wide mandate for empathy and cultural sensitivity training. Sebastian believed that education was key to changing hearts and minds. He envisioned a program that would open eyes and foster understanding among all employees, from the CEO down to the baggage handlers. We need to start from the ground up, Sebastian murmured to himself, jotting down notes on his phone. He decided to focus especially on flight attendants like Bethany, who interacted most closely with passengers. These frontline staff members were the face of the airline, and their behavior could make or break a traveler's experience. Sebastian's plan began to take shape. He would launch the initiative quietly, without fanfare or public announcements. This wasn't about scoring points or making headlines. It was about real, lasting change. As he looked around the cabin, Sebastian's gaze lingered on Bethany. He felt a mix of emotions, anger at her actions, sadness for the pain she had caused, but also a glimmer of hope. Maybe with the right guidance and education, even someone like Bethany could learn and grow. Sebastian knew that simply disciplining Bethany wouldn't be enough. It might satisfy his immediate desire for justice, but it wouldn't solve the deeper issues plaguing the airline. No, he needed to do more. He imagined a series of workshops where employees could share their experiences and learn from one another. He pictured team-building exercises that would break down barriers and foster empathy. And he saw a future where every employee, from the pilots to the gate agents, understood the importance of treating all passengers with respect and dignity. As the flight continued, Sebastian felt a sense of purpose growing within him. This was more than just a business decision. It was a chance to make a real difference in people's lives. He knew the road ahead would be challenging, but he was ready for the journey. As the plane touched down, Sebastian remained in his seat, allowing other passengers to disembark first. He watched as Bethany bustled about, assisting travelers with their belongings, her demeanor noticeably more pleasant towards certain passengers than others. With a quiet sigh, Sebastian gathered his things and made his way off the aircraft. He nodded politely to the crew, including Bethany, who barely acknowledged him. As he walked through the jet bridge, he pulled out his phone and sent a brief message to his team. Begin the process. Discretion is key. In the days that followed, Sebastian's acquisition of the airline remained under wraps. The internal investigation into Bethany's conduct began quietly, with HR representatives discreetly interviewing passengers and crew members who had witnessed the incident. Meanwhile, Sebastian's team worked tirelessly behind the scenes, drafting new policies and training programs. They pored over employee handbooks, diversity guidelines, and customer service protocols, determined to create a comprehensive plan for change. Bethany, oblivious to the storm brewing around her, continued her daily routine. She arrived at work each day, donning her uniform with pride and greeting her colleagues with a smile. In her mind, she had done nothing wrong. She believed she was simply upholding the standards of first-class service. During a coffee break, Bethany chatted with a co-worker about the incident. Can you believe that man? She scoffed. Trying to make me look bad for doing my job? Some people just don't understand how things work up here in first class. 
Her co-worker shifted uncomfortably but said nothing, aware of the whispers circulating about an ongoing investigation. As the days passed, Sebastian received regular updates on the progress of both the investigation and the policy drafts. He reviewed each report carefully, making notes and suggestions. His vision for a more inclusive and respectful airline was slowly taking shape. In one meeting, Sebastian emphasized to his team, we're not just changing rules on paper, we're aiming to transform the entire culture of this airline. It's about creating an environment where every employee and passenger feels valued and respected. Bethany's day started like any other. She arrived at the airport, her uniform crisp and her hair neatly pinned back. As she walked through the employee entrance, she noticed a few co-workers glancing her way and whispering. She shrugged it off, assuming they were just gossiping about the latest office drama. But when she reached her locker, an envelope was waiting for her. Bethany frowned, tearing it open. Her eyes widened as she read the contents. Mandatory training session on cultural sensitivity? She muttered under her breath. You've got to be kidding me. Bethany crumpled the notice in her hand, her cheeks flushing with anger. She had been a flight attendant for over a decade. She knew how to do her job, and she did it well. The very idea that she needed sensitivity training felt like a slap in the face. Throughout her shift, the notice weighed heavily on her mind. As she served drinks and handed out pillows, Bethany couldn't shake the feeling of indignation. She had always prided herself on maintaining the high standards of first-class service. How dare they suggest she needed to change her approach? During her break, Bethany vented to her friend and fellow flight attendant, Lisa. Can you believe this? She fumed, waving the crumpled notice. They're making me go to some ridiculous sensitivity training, as if I don't know how to treat passengers properly. Lisa shifted uncomfortably in her seat. Maybe it's not such a bad idea, Beth. You know, sometimes we all need a refresher on these things. Bethany stared at her friend in disbelief. Are you saying I'm insensitive? No, no, Lisa backpedaled. I just mean, well, times are changing. Maybe the airline wants to make sure we're all on the same page. But Bethany wasn't having it. She stood up abruptly, her chair scraping against the floor. I don't need to be on any page. I know how to do my job, and I do it well. This is just a waste of time. As she stormed out of the break room, Bethany's mind raced with defiant thoughts. She'd go to this training, sure, but she'd make it clear that she didn't need it. She'd show them all that Bethany Williams was a model flight attendant, one who didn't need any lectures on how to treat passengers. Little did Bethany know, her resistance to change was about to be put to the test in ways she never imagined. As the sun rose over the city skyline, Sebastian Dixon sat in his newly acquired office at the airline's headquarters. His eyes were focused on the computer screen before him, filled with page after page of passenger complaints. He scrolled through them slowly, his brow furrowing with each new report of discriminatory behavior. This goes deeper than I thought, Sebastian muttered to himself, shaking his head. He had spent the last few days reviewing not just Bethany's record, but those of other flight attendants and staff members as well. The pattern was clear. Complaints of unfair treatment based on race, age, and appearance had been piling up for years, with little to no action taken. Sebastian leaned back in his chair, his mind working on solutions. He knew that mandatory training was just the first step. To truly change the airline's culture, he needed to create a system where every voice could be heard. With determination in his eyes, Sebastian picked up his phone and dialed his chief of operations. Sarah, I need you to set up a meeting with our tech team, he said. We're going to implement an anonymous feedback system for our passengers. Over the next few hours, Sebastian worked tirelessly with his team to design a user-friendly app. Passengers would be able to rate their experience and provide detailed feedback, all without fear of retaliation. The data would be collected and analyzed, allowing Sebastian to identify problem areas and address them swiftly. As the day wore on, Sebastian's focus shifted to the complaints against Bethany. He read through each one carefully noting the similarities in her behavior across different incidents. It was clear that her actions weren't isolated events, but part of a deeply ingrained attitude. We can't just punish her, 
Sebastian said to his HR director during a late afternoon meeting. We need to give her a chance to understand and change. Together, they drafted a personalized improvement plan for Bethany. It included not just sensitivity training, but also one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions and community outreach programs. Sebastian hoped that by exposing Bethany to diverse experiences, she might begin to see the world through a different lens. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows across his office, Sebastian reviewed the day's work. The anonymous feedback system was in development, the training programs were being expanded, and plans were in place to address individual cases like Bethany's. Sebastian knew that changing an entire company's culture wouldn't happen overnight, but as he looked out over the city, he felt a sense of hope. With patience, persistence, and compassion, he believed he could transform the airline into a model of inclusivity and respect. On a crisp Monday morning, Bethany arrived at the airline's training center, her lips pursed in a tight line. She glanced at her watch, sighing heavily as she pushed open the glass doors. The lobby was bustling with other flight attendants, all gathered for the mandatory cultural sensitivity training. What a waste of time, Bethany muttered under her breath as she signed in at the reception desk. The training room was set up with circular tables, each surrounded by six chairs. Bethany chose a seat near the back, crossing her arms as she settled in. She barely acknowledged the other attendants who joined her table, her eyes fixed on the clock on the wall. As the trainer, a cheerful woman named Mina, began the session, Bethany's indifference was palpable. She slouched in her chair, her eyes glazed over as Lisa explained the importance of cultural awareness in their line of work. Today, we'll be exploring different scenarios and discussing how to handle them with empathy and respect, Mina announced. Her enthusiasm met with Bethany's eye roll. When Mina asked the group to share experiences of cultural misunderstandings, Bethany remained silent. She doodled on her notepad, occasionally glancing at her phone under the table. Bethany, would you like to share your thoughts? Mina asked, noticing her disengagement. Bethany looked up, startled. I don't really have anything to add, she said flatly. I've always done my job just fine. Mina nodded, her smile unwavering. Well, there's always room for growth and learning, isn't there? Bethany shrugged, returning to her doodles. She missed the concerned glances exchanged between Mina and her assistant, who was discreetly operating a camera at the back of the room. As the session progressed, the group engaged in role-playing exercises. Bethany participated minimally, her responses curt and dismissive. When asked to demonstrate how she would handle a non-English-speaking passenger, she sighed heavily. I'd just speak louder and slower, Bethany said, her tone laced with impatience. That usually works. Mina gently suggested alternative approaches, but Bethany waved them off. Look, we can't bend over backwards for every single person, she said. Sometimes they just need to adapt to our way of doing things. The room fell silent, the tension palpable. Bethany, oblivious to the impact of her words, checked her watch again. She couldn't wait for this politically correct nonsense to be over. As the session drew to a close, Mina asked each participant to share one thing they'd learned. When it was Bethany's turn, she shrugged. I guess I learned that we're supposed to walk on eggshells now, she said, her voice dripping with sarcasm. Wouldn't want to offend anyone by doing our jobs. Mina's smile faltered for a moment, but she quickly regained her composure. Thank you for your honesty, Bethany, she said. I hope that as you reflect on today's session, you'll find more positive takeaways. Bethany gathered her things, eager to leave. She failed to notice the assistant packing up the camera equipment, the lens having captured every moment of her resistance throughout the day. Meanwhile, Sebastian sat in his office, his fingers steepled under his chin as he pored over Bethany's personnel file. The more he read, the more he realized there was to the story than just a rude flight attendant. Hmm, he murmured, leaning back in his chair. He closed the file and gazed out the window, his mind working overtime. It's not just about punishing her, he said to himself. It's about breaking the cycle. Sebastian picked up his phone and dialed his head of human resources. Janet, I've been thinking about that pilot program we discussed the one about addressing prejudice in the workplace. 
Yes, Mr. Dixon, Janet replied. We're still in the planning stages. I want to fast track it, Sebastian said, his voice firm but kind. And I have our first participant in mind. He explained his findings about Bethany and his desire to include her in the program. Janet listened intently, occasionally asking questions. Are you sure, sir? She asked when he finished. Given her recent actions, some might see this as too lenient. Sebastian smiled, though Janet couldn't see it through the phone. Sometimes, Janet, the people who need help the most are the ones who don't even know they need it. After hanging up, Sebastian leaned back in his chair, feeling a mix of hope and determination. He knew it wouldn't be easy. Bethany's prejudices were deeply ingrained, formed over years in a community that reinforced them. But he also knew the power of education and exposure to different perspectives. Everyone deserves a chance to grow, he said softly, picking up a framed photo on his desk. It showed a younger version of himself, standing proudly in front of his first successful business venture. Lord knows I had my share of second chances. Sebastian began jotting down ideas for the program. It would need to be comprehensive, addressing not just workplace behavior, but the root causes of prejudice. He envisioned workshops, one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions, and even community outreach programs. As he worked, Sebastian felt a renewed sense of purpose. This wasn't just about changing one person or one airline. It was about creating a ripple effect that could touch countless lives. Next day, Bethany walked into the staff lounge, her head held high despite the gnawing feeling in her stomach. As she approached the coffee machine, she noticed a group of her co-workers huddled together whispering. When they saw her, they quickly dispersed, avoiding eye contact. Morning, Bethany said, trying to sound cheerful. No one responded. She poured her coffee, her hand shaking slightly. This had been happening more and more lately. People were acting strange around her, and she couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. As she stirred her coffee, her supervisor, Mark, entered the room. Bethany, can I see you in my office when you have a moment? Bethany's heart raced. Of course, she replied, forcing a smile. In Mark's office, the tension was palpable. He cleared his throat, looking uncomfortable. Bethany, I've received some... concerns about your recent conduct on flights. Bethany's face flushed. Concerns? What do you mean? Mark shifted in his seat. There have been reports of... well, let's say less than professional behavior towards certain passengers. Bethany felt her defenses rise. I always maintain the highest standards in first class. If passengers can't meet those standards, that's hardly my fault. Mark's expression hardened. Bethany, we're not talking about standards here. We're talking about how you treat people. As she left Mark's office, Bethany felt like the walls were closing in. She couldn't believe this was happening. She'd always prided herself on doing her job well, on maintaining order in her cabin. Over the next few days, Bethany noticed more changes. Her regular flying partners suddenly had schedule conflicts. She was assigned to different routes, working with unfamiliar crews who seemed to watch her every move. One afternoon, as she was checking the passenger manifest for her next flight, she overheard two flight attendants talking in hushed tones. Did you hear about Bethany? One whispered. Yeah, I heard there's an investigation, something about discrimination. Bethany froze, her heart pounding. An investigation? Discrimination? The words echoed in her mind, making her feel dizzy. As she boarded the plane for her next flight, Bethany felt a wave of uncertainty wash over her. For the first time in years, she doubted herself. Had she really done something wrong? Were her actions really discriminatory? Throughout the flight, Bethany found herself second-guessing every interaction. When a passenger asked for help with their bag, she hesitated, wondering if her response would be scrutinized. When she served drinks, she worried about the order in which she approached passengers. By the end of the flight, Bethany was exhausted. The constant self-doubt and worry had taken their toll. As she gathered her things to leave, she caught sight of her reflection in a window. The confident, assured flight attendant she once knew seemed to have disappeared replaced by someone uncertain and afraid. Sebastian sat in his office, his eyes fixed on the computer screen before him. He had been monitoring Bethany's progress in the training program for weeks now, 
carefully reviewing every interaction and report. How's she doing? asked his assistant, Lorita, as she brought him a fresh cup of coffee. Sebastian sighed, rubbing his temples. It's hard to say. There are moments when I think she's getting it, but then... He clicked through a series of video clips, each showing Bethany in different training scenarios. In one, she seemed genuinely engaged, asking thoughtful questions about cultural sensitivity. In another, her body language screamed discomfort and resistance. It's like she's fighting against herself, Sebastian mused. She wants to change, but her old habits are deeply ingrained. Lorita nodded, understanding the complexity of the situation. What's your next move? Sebastian leaned back in his chair, his face set in determination. I think it's time to push her harder. She needs to confront her past behavior head on. He pulled up a document on his screen, outlining the next phase of the program. Public acknowledgement, he said, tapping the screen. It's a risky move, but I believe it's necessary. The plan was bold. Bethany would be asked to address her colleagues and some of the passengers she had mistreated, openly discussing her past mistakes and the lessons she had learned. Are you sure about this, Sebastian? Lorita asked, concern evident in her voice. It could backfire. Sebastian nodded slowly. I know it's a gamble, but Bethany needs this push. She's been hiding behind her defenses for too long. It's time for her to face the truth about her actions. He stood up and walked to the window, looking out at the bustling airport below. This is her chance to show real growth, to prove that she's capable of change. If she can do this, it won't just help her. It could inspire others in the company to examine their own biases. Lorita watched him, admiring his commitment to this cause. And if she can't? Sebastian turned back to face her, his expression serious. Then we'll know we've done everything we could. But I have hope for Bethany. I've seen glimpses of the person she could be. He returned to his desk and picked up his phone. It's time to set this in motion. Let's schedule a meeting with the training coordinators. We need to prepare Bethany for what's coming. As Sebastian began dialing, he felt the weight of his decision. He knew that this next phase would be challenging for Bethany, pushing her to her limits. But he also believed it was necessary not just for her, but for the entire airline. Bethany's hands trembled as she read the email on her phone. Her heart raced, and she felt a cold sweat break out on her forehead. The next training session wasn't just another meeting. It was going to be live-streamed to every single employee in the company. Oh no, she whispered, her voice barely audible in the empty break room. This can't be happening. She scrolled through the email again, hoping she had misread it but there it was in black and white. Your next session will be broadcast live as part of our company-wide initiative for transparency and growth. Bethany's mind raced with panic. Everyone would be watching her. Her colleagues, her superiors, even the new owners of the airline. And worst of all, she'd have to talk about that day. The day she'd confronted the passenger who turned out to be Sebastian Dixon. As the days passed, Bethany's anxiety grew. She found herself lying awake at night, replaying the incident in her mind. The memory of her actions made her cringe with shame. What was I thinking? She muttered to herself as she tossed and turned in bed. How could I have been so blind? The night before the live-streamed session, Bethany sat at her kitchen table, surrounded by notes and talking points. She'd been trying to prepare, to find the right words to explain herself. But everything she wrote felt hollow and inadequate. I can't do this she said, pushing away from the table in frustration. I can't face all those people and admit how wrong I was. But as much as she wanted to run away from it all, Bethany knew she had no choice. This was her chance to show that she had learned from her mistakes. It was her opportunity to prove that she could change. With shaking hands, she picked up her pen again and started writing. This time, instead of excuses, she focused on the truth. She wrote about her prejudices, her misguided assumptions, and the harm she had caused. As the sun rose on the day of the live stream, Bethany felt a mix of dread and determination. She dressed carefully in her uniform, smoothing out every wrinkle 
as if it could somehow smooth out her past mistakes. At the training center, Bethany's stomach churned as she watched the technical team set up the cameras and microphones. The reality of what she was about to do hit her hard. Ms. Bethany? A young technician approached her. We're ready for you. Remember, just look at the main camera and try to forget about the live stream. You've got this. Bethany nodded, not trusting herself to speak. As she walked to the front of the room, she felt as if she were moving in slow motion. The lights seemed too bright, the silence too loud. She took a deep breath and faced the camera. In that moment, Bethany knew that everything was about to change. Her reputation, her career, her self-image. It all hung in the balance of what she was about to say. Bethany stood before the camera, her hands clasped tightly to stop them from shaking. The red light blinked on, signaling that she was now live to the entire company. She took a deep breath and began. Hello everyone, I'm Bethany Willow, and I'm here to talk about an incident that happened on one of our flights. Her voice quavered slightly, but she pressed on. I made a terrible mistake. I treated a passenger unfairly because of the color of his skin. As she recounted the events with Sebastian Dixon, Bethany felt a lump forming in her throat. I was wrong. So wrong. I let my prejudices cloud my judgment and I hurt someone who didn't deserve it. Tears welled up in her eyes as she continued. I've spent a lot of time thinking about why I acted that way. It's not easy to admit, but I grew up in a place where these attitudes were normal. But that's no excuse. I should have known better. Just as Bethany was starting to show real signs of remorse and understanding, a commotion erupted off camera. The director of communications rushed in, whispering urgently to the producer. Confused, Bethany paused mid-sentence. Is... Is everything okay? The producer signaled for her to keep going but Bethany could see the worry on everyone's faces. She stumbled through the rest of her prepared statement, her mind racing with questions. As soon as the cameras stopped rolling, chaos erupted in the room. Bethany overheard snippets of conversation. Breaking news. Airline criticized. PR stunt. Her heart sank as she realized what was happening. A major news outlet had just published a scathing article about the airline's new policies including the very program she was participating in. The article, which was quickly going viral, painted the airline's efforts as nothing more than a superficial attempt to save face. It questioned the authenticity of the training sessions and suggested that real, systemic changes weren't being made. Bethany felt a wave of despair wash over her. Just when she had started to believe in the possibility of change, both for herself and the company, this happened. She wondered if her words had meant anything at all. In his office, Sebastian Dixon was already fielding calls from board members and shareholders. The negative press was threatening to undo all the progress they had made. He knew he had to act fast to prove that these changes were more than just for show. As Sebastian hung up from yet another tense call, he rubbed his temples, feeling the weight of the challenge ahead. He had believed in the power of transformation, both personal and institutional. Now he needed to find a way to demonstrate that their efforts were genuine and effective. The criticism stung, but Sebastian was determined not to let it derail their progress. He picked up his phone, ready to fight back against the doubts and prove that real change was possible. Next day, Sebastian Dixon sat at the head of a large conference room, his face a mask of calm determination. He had organized this company-wide forum as a direct response to the negative press. The room was packed with airline staff, from flight attendants to executives. Bethany sat near the back, her eyes darting nervously around the room. Thank you all for coming, Sebastian began, his voice steady and clear. Today we're going to hear from some of our passengers. Their stories are important, and I ask that you listen with open hearts and minds. One by one, passengers stepped up to the microphone. Their stories were raw and emotional, painting a vivid picture of the discrimination they had faced while flying. A young Muslim woman spoke about being asked to change seats because another passenger felt uncomfortable sitting next to her. A Latino man described being repeatedly questioned about his first-class ticket. Each account was met with a heavy silence, broken only by the occasional sniffle or sharp intake of breath. Bethany listened, her face growing paler with each story. 
She saw her own actions reflected in these accounts, and the realization made her stomach churn. Then, an elderly black woman stepped up to the microphone. Her hands shook slightly as she adjusted her glasses. I remember asking for help with my bag, she began, her voice quavering. The flight attendant looked right through me like I wasn't even there, but when a white passenger asked for help just moments later, she was all smiles and assistance. Bethany's eyes widened in recognition. This was the same incident Sebastian had witnessed on that fateful flight. She felt a lump form in her throat as the woman continued. It might seem small to some, but it hurt. It made me feel less than human, like I didn't matter. Tears welled up in Bethany's eyes. She could see now how her actions, which she had once dismissed as trivial, had deeply affected people. The weight of her past behavior pressed down on her, making it hard to breathe. As the forum continued, more stories poured out. Each one struck a chord with the audience, driving home the pervasive nature of prejudice in their industry. Staff members exchanged uncomfortable glances, many realizing for the first time the impact of their actions or inactions. Sebastian watched the room carefully, noting the reactions. He saw the shock, the guilt, and in some cases the dawning understanding. But his eyes kept returning to Bethany. He saw the tears streaming down her face, the way she seemed to shrink into herself with each new story. When the last passenger had spoken, Sebastian stood up again. Thank you all for your courage in sharing your experiences, he said, his voice thick with emotion. This is why we're here. This is why we're making changes. Not for publicity, not for profit, but because it's the right thing to do. As the forum neared its end, an unexpected voice broke through the heavy silence. I... I'd like to speak, if I may, Bethany said, her voice shaky but determined. All eyes turned to her as she made her way to the front of the room. Sebastian nodded, encouraging her to continue. Bethany took a deep breath, her hands trembling as she gripped the podium. My name is Bethany, she began, her voice barely above a whisper. And I'm here to admit that I've been part of the problem. A murmur rippled through the audience. Bethany swallowed hard and pressed on. I grew up in a small town where everyone looked like me, she said. We didn't talk about diversity or inclusion. We just existed in our bubble. She paused, gathering her courage. When I became a flight attendant, I brought those biases with me. I didn't even realize I had them. But listening to these stories today, I see now how my actions have hurt people. Tears welled up in her eyes as she continued. I've treated passengers differently based on how they looked. I've ignored some and favored others. And I'm ashamed. The room was silent, hanging on her every word. But being ashamed isn't enough, Bethany said, her voice growing stronger. I need to change. We all do. It's not easy to challenge beliefs we've held our whole lives, but it's necessary. She looked out at the audience, making eye contact with some of the passengers who had shared their stories. I'm sorry, she said, her voice cracking. I'm so sorry for the pain I've caused and I promise from this day forward to do better, to be better. As Bethany finished speaking, a smattering of applause broke out. Some audience members nodded in appreciation of her honesty, while others remained skeptical, their arms crossed and brows furrowed. Sebastian watched from the side, a small smile playing on his lips. He knew that Bethany's journey was far from over, but this was a crucial first step. As the forum came to a close, Sebastian approached Bethany. His face was kind, but serious. Bethany, could I speak with you privately for a moment? He asked. Bethany nodded, her heart racing. She followed Sebastian to a quiet corner of the room, away from the dispersing crowd. Sebastian took a deep breath. Bethany, there's something I need to tell you, he began. Do you remember the passenger you had an altercation with on Flight 1023 last month? Bethany's face paled. Of course she remembered. It was the incident that had started this whole ordeal. Yes, she whispered, her voice barely audible. Sebastian's eyes met hers. That passenger was me. The words hit Bethany like a ton of bricks. She stumbled backward, her hand flying to her mouth. Oh my God, 
she gasped. I... I had no idea. I'm so sorry, I... Sebastian held up a hand, silencing her. I was angry that day, Bethany. Very angry. What you did was wrong on so many levels. Tears welled up in Bethany's eyes as the full weight of her actions crashed down on her. She had slapped a passenger, and not just any passenger, but the man who now owned the airline. But, Sebastian continued, his voice softening, I saw an opportunity. An opportunity to use that incident as a catalyst for real change within this company. Bethany looked at him, confusion mixing with her shame. You mean you didn't just fire me on the spot? Sebastian shook his head. No, I believed that simply dismissing you wouldn't solve the deeper issues at play. Instead, I wanted to address the root causes of discrimination within our airline. Bethany was stunned. She had expected punishment, not understanding. I don't know what to say, she mumbled, wiping away a tear. You don't have to say anything, Sebastian replied gently. Just keep learning. Keep growing. That's all I ask. Bethany nodded, a mix of emotions swirling within her. She felt ashamed of her past actions, but also immensely grateful for this unexpected chance at redemption. Thank you, she said softly, for giving me this opportunity to learn and grow. I promise I won't let you down. Sebastian smiled warmly. I believe you, Bethany. Now let's work together to make this airline a place where everyone feels welcome and respected. Sebastian took a deep breath, his eyes still fixed on Bethany. I have a proposition for you, he said, his voice calm but firm. Bethany looked up, her eyes wide with uncertainty. A proposition? she echoed. Sebastian nodded. I'd like to offer you a position as a leader in our new cultural sensitivity initiative. Bethany's jaw dropped. Of all the things she had expected, this wasn't one of them. Me? But why? She stammered. Because you've lived it, Sebastian explained. You've experienced firsthand how deeply ingrained biases can affect our actions. And now you're learning to overcome them. Bethany listened intently, her heart pounding in her chest. Let me be clear, Sebastian continued, his tone serious. This isn't a reward, it's an opportunity, a chance to make amends by helping others learn from your mistakes. Bethany nodded slowly, understanding the weight of what Sebastian was offering. It wasn't just a job, it was a responsibility. You'll work directly with our training team, Sebastian explained. You'll share your story, lead discussions, and help develop new programs to address discrimination within our company. As Sebastian spoke, Bethany felt a shift inside her. The shame she had been carrying began to transform into something else. A determination to do better. To be better. I... I don't know what to say, Bethany said softly. I'm honored that you'd trust me with this, after everything that's happened. Sebastian smiled gently. It's not about trust, Bethany. It's about growth. You've shown that you're capable of change. Now, I'm asking you to help others do the same. Bethany took a deep breath, feeling the enormity of the task ahead. But instead of fear, she felt a sense of purpose. I accept, she said, her voice stronger now. I want to make things right. Sebastian nodded approvingly. Good. But remember, this journey isn't just about changing others. It's about continuing to change yourself. Bethany understood. She knew that her transformation was far from complete. There would be challenges ahead, moments of doubt and difficulty. But for the first time in a long time, she felt truly hopeful. I'm ready, Bethany said, her voice filled with newfound determination. I promise to approach this with humility and compassion. I know I still have a lot to learn, but I'm committed to doing better. For myself, for our passengers, and for the entire airline. Sebastian smiled, seeing the sincerity in Bethany's eyes. He knew the road ahead wouldn't be easy, but he believed in the power of second chances. And in that moment, watching Bethany's transformation, he felt confident that real change was possible. 
Bethany stepped into the conference room, her heart racing. It was her first day in her new role, and she felt a mix of excitement and nervousness. Sebastian stood at the front of the room, surrounded by a diverse group of trainers. Everyone, I'd like you to meet Bethany, Sebastian said, gesturing towards her. She'll be working with us to develop our new cultural sensitivity workshops. The room fell silent. Bethany could feel the weight of their stares. She knew many of them were aware of her past actions, and she could sense their skepticism. Taking a deep breath, Bethany spoke. I know some of you might be wondering why I'm here, she said, her voice shaky but determined. I made mistakes in the past, but I'm here because I want to make things right. I want to help others learn from my errors. As the days passed, Bethany threw herself into her work. She spent hours poring over research, brainstorming ideas with the trainers, and sharing her own experiences. It wasn't easy. Sometimes she caught whispers or suspicious glances from her colleagues. One afternoon during a team meeting, a trainer named Marcus spoke up. How can we trust that you've really changed? He asked Bethany directly. How do we know this isn't just for show? The room fell silent. Bethany felt her cheeks burn, but she met Marcus's gaze steadily. That's a fair question, she replied. I can't prove my sincerity with words alone, but I hope that my actions, my dedication to this program, will show you that I'm committed to change. Sebastian watched the exchange with interest, nodding approvingly at Bethany's response. As weeks turned into months, Bethany's dedication began to pay off. The workshops she helped develop were receiving positive feedback from employees. Her personal story, which she shared openly in training sessions, resonated with many who struggled with their own biases. Slowly but surely, the skepticism around her began to fade. Colleagues who had once avoided her now sought her input. Even Marcus, who had been one of her harshest critics, began to warm up to her. One day after a particularly successful workshop, Sebastian pulled Bethany aside. You're doing great work, he said, smiling warmly. I'm proud of how far you've come. Bethany felt a surge of emotion. Thank you, she said softly. This opportunity, it's changed my life. I just hope I'm making a difference. Sebastian nodded. You are. People are starting to see that change is possible. And that's a powerful message. As Bethany left the office that evening, she felt a sense of purpose she'd never experienced before. She knew the journey wasn't over. There was still so much work to be done. But for the first time, she felt truly hopeful about the future. As weeks turned into months, the airline's cultural transformation began to gain significant momentum. Passengers and staff alike noticed a marked improvement in customer service and inclusivity across all aspects of their travel experience. One sunny afternoon, Sebastian sat in his office reviewing the latest feedback reports. A smile spread across his face as he read comment after comment, praising the airline's newfound commitment to diversity and respect. Mr. Dixon, his assistant called, poking her head into the office. You might want to see this. She handed him a tablet open to a major news site. The headline read, Airlines Cultural Overhaul Sets New Industry Standard. Sebastian skimmed the article, his heart swelling with pride. It detailed the positive changes implemented by the airline, from improved staff training to more inclusive policies. The piece specifically highlighted how these reforms had led to a significant increase in customer satisfaction and employee morale. Meanwhile, Bethany was busy leading a training session for new flight attendants. As she shared her personal journey, she noticed the captivated expressions on the faces of her audience. I used to think I was just doing my job, Bethany admitted, her voice filled with emotion. But I realize now that my actions were hurting people. It wasn't easy to face my prejudices, but doing so has made me a better person and a better employee. After the session, a young trainee approached Bethany. Your story is really inspiring, she said. It makes me believe that real change is possible. Bethany felt a warmth in her chest. She was making a difference just as she'd hoped. Later that week, Sebastian called a company-wide meeting to discuss the progress of their cultural transformation. As he stood before the gathered employees, he couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. 
The changes we've made aren't just good for our passengers, Sebastian said, his voice carrying across the room. They're good for all of us. We're creating a workplace where everyone feels valued and respected. He paused, his eyes scanning the crowd until they landed on Bethany. And I want to take a moment to recognize someone who has become a symbol of our transformation. Bethany, would you please stand? Bethany rose, her cheeks flushing as all eyes turned to her. Bethany's journey, Sebastian continued, from acknowledging her mistakes to becoming a leader in our cultural sensitivity initiative, shows us that change is possible when we're willing to confront our biases and learn from them. A round of applause filled the room. Bethany felt tears prick her eyes as she looked around at her colleagues, seeing respect and admiration where once there had been skepticism and distrust. As the meeting concluded, Sebastian approached Bethany. You should be proud, he said warmly. Your story is inspiring others to examine their own biases and work towards change. Bethany nodded, feeling a mix of humility and pride. Thank you for giving me this chance, she replied. I never imagined I could make such a difference. Bethany stood at the front of the training room, her heart racing with a mixture of nervousness and excitement. She looked out at the faces of the new group of employees, a diverse mix of men and women from various backgrounds. Taking a deep breath, she began her session on empathy and respect. Good morning, everyone, Bethany said, her voice warm and inviting. I'm here to share something important with you today. And it's not just about airline policies or customer service techniques. It's about understanding the impact our actions can have on others. She paused, gathering her thoughts before continuing. I want to tell you a story, my story. It's not an easy one to share, but I believe it's crucial for you to hear. Bethany recounted the incident with Sebastian, her voice filled with emotion as she described her prejudiced behavior and the consequences that followed. The room was silent, all eyes fixed on her as she spoke. I thought I was just doing my job, she explained, her voice cracking slightly. But in reality, I was letting my biases control my actions. I didn't see the harm I was causing until it was too late. As she continued, Bethany noticed the expressions on the trainees' faces changing. Some looked shocked, others nodded in understanding, and a few even had tears in their eyes. The hardest part wasn't facing the consequences, Bethany admitted. It was facing myself and acknowledging that I needed to change. But that moment of realization was also the beginning of my journey to become a better person and a better employee. She went on to describe the training she underwent and how it opened her eyes to the experiences of others. Bethany shared anecdotes from passengers who had faced discrimination, helping the trainees understand the real-world impact of such behavior. Every interaction we have with a passenger is an opportunity, Bethany said, her voice growing stronger. An opportunity to make someone feel valued, respected, and welcome. But it's also an opportunity to cause harm if we're not mindful of our biases. As the session progressed, Bethany encouraged the trainees to share their own experiences and thoughts. The room came alive with discussion, with many participants opening up about their own biases and fears. One trainee raised her hand. I never realized how much impact small actions could have, she said. Your story really makes me want to examine my own behavior. Bethany smiled, feeling a warmth spread through her chest. This was why she did this work, to help others understand and grow, just as she had. As the session drew to a close, Bethany felt a renewed sense of purpose. She saw in the faces of the trainees the same determination to change that she had felt at the beginning of her own journey. Remember, Bethany said as the trainees prepared to leave. Empathy and respect aren't just words. They're actions we choose to take every day. And those choices can make all the difference in someone's life. Sebastian stood at the back of the training room, watching Bethany with a mixture of pride and amazement. The woman leading the session with such passion and empathy was a far cry from the prejudiced flight attendant he'd encountered months ago. As Bethany guided the trainees through an exercise on recognizing unconscious bias, Sebastian couldn't help but reflect on their shared journey. He remembered the sting of that slap, the anger that had initially coursed through him. But instead of seeking revenge, he had chosen a different path, one of compassion and transformation. The airline had undergone a remarkable change, 
what was once a company plagued by discrimination complaints, was now hailed as a model for inclusivity in the industry. Sebastian's reforms had taken root, creating a culture of respect and understanding that permeated every level of the organization. Bethany's voice brought Sebastian back to the present. Remember, she was saying, every interaction is an opportunity to make someone feel valued and respected. Our words and actions have power. Let's use that power for good. The trainees nodded, their faces showing the same determination Sebastian had seen in Bethany when she first committed to change. It was a powerful reminder of how far they'd come. As the session wrapped up, Sebastian approached Bethany. That was incredible, he said warmly. You've really found your calling. Bethany's eyes shimmered with unshed tears. I never thought I'd be here, she admitted. Thank you for giving me the chance to make things right. Sebastian smiled, feeling a deep sense of satisfaction. This, he realized, was the true meaning of ruthless revenge. Not punishing those who wrong us, but helping them become better versions of themselves. In doing so, they had not only transformed Bethany and the airline, but had created a ripple effect of positive change. We've both learned a lot, Sebastian said, placing a gentle hand on Bethany's shoulder. And look at what we've accomplished together. As they looked out at the room full of eager trainees ready to carry the message of inclusivity and respect to every corner of the airline, Sebastian felt a profound sense of hope. They had turned a moment of injustice into a catalyst for change, proving that compassion and the pursuit of justice could lead to the most satisfying form of redemption. If you enjoyed the story of Sebastian and Bethany, I handpicked this next story that will touch your heart. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.